Bien, nous allons bientôt commencer puisque est... il est déjà l'heure de voilà bientôt et je voudrais faire donc je voudrais dire well uh, uh, sorry I'm speaking now in English I'm sorry welcome so everyone uh, it is really great to have participants I saw a little bit around uh, from different countries I saw from Greece and Spain and Norway and UK. Uh, even I think from some from the Middle East also, and of course from France. So really welcome to our evening program, Earth Story. Uh, so for those who doesn't know me, uh, my name is Brigitte Wada, and I'm president of Women Federation in France and vice president of the Women Federation in Europe. And our Women Federation uh, Europe um, I started a monthly series of uh, events we called Earth Story, which is to highlight the life and the work of women actively involved in the society. Uh, so it is an opportunity to discover their journey and to be inspired by their achievements, both external and internal as well. So tonight I have the pleasure to introduce Mrs. Patricia Lalonde, which I came to know a long time ago already, I think, through her work, especially in Afghanistan. I will shortly introduce her, even though I think you, you some of you may have seen her bio because uh, we share it as well, but I will read again some part of her bio. Uh, so Patricia Lalonde spent 15 years working in Afghanistan from 2000 to 2015, financing and building girls school and fighting for women's rights with an NGO called, called MEWA, which is a mobilization for elected women in Afghanistan, if I remember well. <laughs> she has organized meetings for Afghan members of parliament for Afghan journalists in France. She was member of the European Parliament from 2017 to 2019, part of the Foreign Affairs Committee. She's also a researcher at the Institute for Peace and Security in Europe. She attended also many conferences about human rights and peace all around the world. She is now a vice president of the French think tank Geopragma, aimed to have a realistic and pragmatic approach of geopolitics issue. issue sorry. So she's just back from a conference in uh, Syria and uh, Iran. And also I know she just came back from uh, a summit uh, which was uh, held in, uh, in Cambodia. So she has a lot to share with us tonight. So we will uh, uh, later now share a story. So Patricia, this is your turn. <laughs> Thank you, Brigitte. Thank you very much for inviting me, thank you for WWPF, <laughs> invited me to, to speak about my story. Uh, I will try to have my, my English not, not, so, not so bad. Uh, and it's happened today to be uh, the second anniversary of the fall of the Afghan country to the Taliban. And that's why for me, this date is, is you can imagine terrible because all my uh, commitment was in Afghanistan for, for many, many years. And uh, uh, I have the feeling now that all the, the, the work I've done in Afghanistan, everything is, uh, is finished now and back again with the, this terrible evil that, uh, that are the Taliban right now. So I would like to explain uh, how I, I was uh, convicted convinced to, to go to Afghanistan and to help people. It was, it was in 1999, I heard about uh, what was going on in Algeria with the uh, Islamist armed group. I don't know if you know what was JER at this time, but uh, these people, um, we are making atrocities in all the country in Algeria, uh, beheading people, uh, making massacres in villages. And when we hear about this in France, and in Europe, I mean, in France, we cannot say, oh, Algeria is not far. far. We have a connection France with Algeria. What is going on in Algeria? And so I met uh, an Algerian lady, which, which has been far after, by the way, a minister, 
a culture, minister of culture, which name is Khalida Mesaudi, uh, who told me in Paris, oh, but I am, I am going to organize a big uh, meeting in Alger to, to denounce these terrible people. So we de I decided to go to Alger. This was my first involvement in, uh, in human rights uh, because I cannot accept such, such things. So I take the plane with um, uh, two or three friends who were working with me. And uh, we arrived in Alger and in the plane, we met with um, Simone Veil. Uh, everybody knows with Simone Veil. And Simone Veil told me, oh, I am going to the same meeting as well because that's terrible what is going on in, in Algeria now. And during the meeting, Khalid Ami Saudi, uh, it was a huge meeting with you know, 1,000 people attending the meeting in, in the center of Alger. And Simone Veil, Simone Veil made a, a, a hard uh, talk about uh, this group, the Islamist, uh, radical, this radical Islamist uh, JIA. And uh, I met during this meeting an Afghan woman who, who are just close to me. And she told me, oh, uh, you are French? Okay, I am Afghan, I'm living in France, but you know what is going on in Algeria? It's exactly what's happened now in our country in Afghanistan. It was in 1999. So, at that time, that was the beginning. I said, no, it's not possible. And uh, that's why we, we begin to, uh, to have meetings in Paris with uh, this um, Afghan, uh, Afghan girl, which name, which name is uh, Shukriya Aidar, which, is, uh, which make a tremendous job for, for the Afghan. And we decided with an, Af an American friend, Connie Board, and um, Many uh, many people are trying to gather to to say it's not possible. We have to go to go to Afghanistan, and we have to find a way to uh, say to the world what is going on there. That uh, women, one part of the population, was in slavery. It was not uh, a question of human rights. It was a question of slavery. One part of the people, of Afghan people. Uh, could not go outside the, the house, could not, of course, uh, study, go to school, go work, even, even cannot be, uh, go to an hospital because they are not allowed to, to, be, um, to be cared by, by uh, a man. So you can imagine, it was really slavery. So we have organized to go to in Duchambe, which is very close to, to the Afghanistan, Afghan border. And we gathered before this, we gathered many, many women from all around the world with Anos, by internet. It was at the beginning of internet. And we have a Spanish woman, Italian woman, Australian woman, American woman, Japanese woman. We have women from everywhere. We, we buy the ticket plane to go to Duchambe in, in Tajikistan and attending, attending our conference. And so we have many um, press with us uh, from everywhere. And uh, we even succeed to have uh, some Afghan girls coming from inside Afghanistan to uh, testi testimony, to give their, their, their témoignage about what was going on inside the country. And so we make a conference press uh, in Duchambe. We stay there one week. And uh, the Afghan women, it was uh, so uh, unbelievable. The Afghan women spent one night writing the rights they were asking for, for to, the, to the Afghan government, to the Taliban, you can imagine. So they write all the charter and you can imagine what, is, what was the charter uh, to allow to go to school, allow to go outside, allow to... It was not a story of veil or no, not veil. Uh, allowed not, not to, to, to wear the burqa, but because the burqa is uh, something who covers the, the, the girls completely. But they were even not asked ask about scarves or not scarves. That, that, that was not the problem. The problem is that basic rights that, that, to, to escape of slavery <laughs> in their country. And while, um, while the charter was, was uh, finished, we, we went to, we went to, with an helicopter, we went inside Afghanistan in the, in the part uh, controlled by Ahmad Shah Massoud. Everybody knows about Ahmad Shah Massoud. 
And we went there, we were uh, seven of us with uh, two Afghans and the charter. And Amacha Masood, we asked Amacha Masood if he could sign the charter. And of course he did it, he signed the charter and he just added uh, with uh, our usual uh, customers. Uh, and so we were very happy about this. And so we tried to publicize all the story. And at that time, uh, Masood was fighting against the Taliban. It was exactly the same thing that, <laughs> that happens now. It is not Amacha Masood who is fighting against the Taliban. It is the son of Amacha Masood, Abat, which I know I, I met him when he was uh, seven years old. Uh, which is now fighting to try to, to throw away the Taliban. You can imagine how difficult it is. It is two, two years ago, that 20 years of uh, international community, Americans and NATO and everybody in the country. And now we are back for as, as the same thing that uh, before. So it's, uh, it's just impossible to, to imagine. So at that time, I uh, I went to um, I went to see uh, again 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 in Afghanistan, and I was helped by the Masood Foundation and by uh, the people of uh, Panjshir Valley to to build some school, and that, that's why I um, I uh, created a little NGO which name was the Solidarité Panjshir at this time because I cannot work inside uh, the other part uh, of uh, Afghanistan because it was under uh, Taliban control. So I built uh, two girls' schools in the Panjshir Valley, uh, where, one in Parak and another one in Bazarak, two little schools for girls. It was, uh, it was very, very unbelievable to see the, the girls come, going to school there because Mash Masood allow, of course, the girls to, to go to school. And so every year I used to, to go to Afghanistan and. 11 September happened, but just before we organized for Amacha Masoon, he's coming in Europe. So he went in Europe, he went to the European Parliament and he, and he gave a huge conference uh, telling us uh, what he knows about Ben Laden and about, uh, and about all the Ben Laden was, uh, was uh, imagining for the Western countries, it was terrible. And he says this, in a, in a, he was not speaking about 11 September exactly, but he was saying, uh, you have to be very careful uh, because it's terrible what was, what was going on for you in, a, in the Western countries. And so, Bo, he, he, he was back in, a, in, a, in Afghanistan and I went myself, it was in February, and I went, I went myself in Afghanistan to meet him. Uh, with two journalists in um, in July, end of July, and I was with two journalists who have uh, boxes with uh, with their cameras and everything, and we were waiting for two days to meet with Masoud, and uh, finally at uh, noon in the night, <laughs> we have a telephone call. Ah, Masoud can receive you, so we go and we spend one hour with Amacha Masoud, telling us again and again what uh, possibly could. Uh, happened to the West, to America and to the, he was not saying America, he was a Western country. And so we were very, very concerned about, about this. And, uh, and I came back in France and you know the story after, in uh, August, uh, Masoud, at the beginning of 9th of September, Masoud was assassinated. And three days after, you have 11 September. So, you can imagine. So for us, it was terrible. And I remember just before 11 September, uh, we had a telephone, con telephone call from the Panjshir Valley who say, you, you have to do something with America because it's terrible what is going to, to happen. And so I remember with my husband, I was, uh, we were uh, calling to the White House. It was a noon o'clock and say, you have to be careful in America now because uh, we know by the Panjshir Valley and by Masoud uh, that because they were fighting against the Russian at that time with Ben Laden. So he knows the plans, Ben Laden's plan, remember? And so what's, and so I think we, we had uh, Anthony Blinken at the telephone, uh, at the telephone because uh, he was, uh, come on, come on, he was, uh, 
uh, keeping the White House during the night. He was staying there during the night. He, he was not Secretary of State, of course. At that time, he was a small secretary. And, and two days after, there was September 11th. So after you, everybody knows what, what's happened, what's going on, and there is a war. And so it was for um, Afghanistan was liberated from from the Taliban, and so it was much more easy for us now to go to go there. And I could go in the part of uh, the part of uh, other parts of Afghanistan, and that's why I begin to to <clears throat> to work with a big big school, which has been destroyed by the Taliban. It was a, the biggest uh, lycée in Mazar e Sharif, which is the third uh, city of Afghanistan, and it was a big big job that um, I have to to have many um, to recall many big sum of, of money to, to the school. And so I was traveling everywhere to get, to get money. And uh, after, as everybody knows, there was Karzai government in there. And uh, we, in the constitution, it was st stipulated that um, women can be, the parliament have to be 20% of women in the parliament. We, we can imagine <laughs> after the Taliban, it was a huge, a huge story. So the twenty percent of women were there. So some of these women were coming from remote part of Afghanistan. Uh, they know nothing of nothing. It was terrible. So we decided when they were elected, we decided to to explain there how them how to how a Parliament is. Um, what, what to do in a parliament. So we invited uh, 30 of them <coughs> in, uh, in Paris. And so uh, we take them to the National Assembly, to the Elysee Palace, uh, to, to meet with uh, Madame Chirac at that time, uh, to the French Senate, uh, so uh, everywhere. But it was, of course, it was difficult for them because, uh, because they are Muslim countries and so, it's, it was, I think it was too difficult for them, but the, some of them, not all of them, but some of them were, were very uh, uh, following the, the program very good, very well. But um, the other part was not uh, too tight, uh, they don't understand. Uh, so it was a complicated story. And one year after I was speaking with um, an American NGO in Vital Voices and said, oh, it's fantastic what, what we are doing in Afghanistan. We would like to make the, the same thing for the Afghan uh, women MPs in, uh, in Istanbul, in Turkey, which is a Muslim country. So, it, well, so we bring them 30 women in Turkey. It was much more easy for them because uh, Turkey was close to, to Afghanistan. So this was very interesting. And after we, all, we organized with uh, Turkish women MPs and French women MPs, uh, partners between Afghans and them. So it was very, uh, it was the beginning you know, uh, of the story. So, and uh, as you, you mentioned, uh, I organized also a, a conference for journalists in Paris. Afghan journalist in Paris. As I went from uh, one week there, and so, so they were. We went with them uh, in every radio, TV, okay, everywhere to to tell to show to show them how is working uh, the French uh, French and European media. So is that the way for 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 my uh, my uh, involvement in Afghanistan and uh, also. After a few uh, five years working there, finally, the new after Karzai government, the new, the new election times, and I was at that time very close to Abdullah Abdullah, which was working with Amacha Masood, and he was the foreign minister of the Karzai government, and he wanted to to run for election. So I say, oh, it's a very good, very good opportunity because he was. Tajik and Pashtun, and in Afghanistan you have to, to be all this, uh, to manage all these tribes and all these uh, ethnicities. And so this was a good, so 
we, we, I, make, I made the, all the campaign with Abdullah Abdullah inside Afghanistan. I was in all the countries, the town of Afghanistan to, with, with him and followed him, followed him. It, it was tremendous experience for me, uh, for, with Abdullah Abdullah and all the friends uh, all, all around. And unfortunately, Abdullah Abdullah doesn't want Bon, everybody say, said uh, in Afghanistan that they ha he has won. They, and there is a, I use a tricherie. Uh, the election was not very fair. Bon, in, in fact, uh, Ashraf Ghani was elected and then, uh, and then Abdullah Abdullah uh, was uh, the American proposed because it was the American behind all of this. And the American uh, tells Abdullah Abdullah, asked him to be, uh, to, to have a good uh, place uh, near, near Ghani. And, uh, but he was very deceived and, and uh, all the people around, around Abdullah Abdullah were uh, completely uh, despaired. Uh, in my sense, it was a very bad thing because uh, with Abdullah Abdullah, I am not sure the Taliban will uh, be uh, now in power now, but that's that, um, another story. Voilà, donc, I don't want to, to be very, um, to say tell more about Afghanistan because now uh, I am trying, I don't know really what to do now uh, because it's so complicated. And uh, I try, at I, I, the beginning, I, I tried to, to help uh, Ahmad Masoud, uh, the, Ahmad, Ahmad Shah Masoud's son and the National Resistance France. I always engage with them, but it's so so complicated so i i really uh, i don't know now so i really uh, i expect when i was in iran uh, in tehran a few uh, few weeks ago uh, two, two, two months ago uh, i told about uh, Iran, uh, about uh, the afghan refugees and i would tell you after what's uh, going on but i am sure now i i told this in, in cambodia as well to the asian uh, people there attending uh, conference that uh, for me, the Western country can do nothing to, to throw out the Taliban now. It's too late, it's too late because uh, we have our own problem. And the Taliban say, uh, you, you know what is going on in the Western countries now? They have the, the LGBT, uh, their gender chance. Uh, <laughs> we don't want this. And so we are not able, I think, unfortunately, it's uh, very painful for me and for all the group of people who are working on, on, on this issue. So that's why my, uh, my, but my commitment in Afghanistan and on human rights has allowed me to give many conferences, especially for UPF and, uh, and uh, WWPF, <laughs> Women Federation, in New York, in London, Eddie knows about it, in New York, in London, in Amman, in Jerusalem, in South Korea, and we, we had even the opportunity to go to, to the demilitarized zone of North Korea. So that was very interesting, um, thanks to UPF and uh, to, to give me, gave, gave me the opportunity to make all this conference to, to tell about the story of, of Afghanistan. And uh, I was at that time also working with uh, EPSE, Institute for Prospective and Security in Europe. And so I made, my, I made many missions abroad, especially in Africa, in, uh, in Malia, about, always about women's rights. I was also in Azerbaijan, in Georgia. And in Georgia, in Azerbaijan, we made, um, we made uh, a mission about uh, early, early, early ma marriage, pre early marriage. In the zone between, in the... Early marriage, yeah. Early marriage. Yeah, yeah. In, the, in the zone uh, early, near Iran, for Azerbaijan near Iran. And we would like to know whether that's going on for girls or not, which are, are not obliged to, to be married at 10 or, or 12 years old. And so we can, uh, we saw on the school pictures of, uh, it was forbidden for girls to be married before it was 16 years old better than, than, than 12, but uh, we, we were fighting against this. I was with my friend Anne-Marie Lizin, which was the former uh, Belgium president 
she is now passed away. She is not there, but uh, I made many uh, missions with her and with uh, IPSE in this country and in Malia and so uh, and in Georgia as well. And so now I went to the, I was elected to the European Parliament uh, with the Liberal uh, Party U UDI, which is now the, how do you say now the group of uh, Macron, Renew Europe, which is now Renew Europe. But uh, to be frank, uh, I have been deceived. I was not so happy there because I arrived in the European Parliament with uh, my Afghan dossier, my Yemeni dossier, my all my dossier from everywhere. And so it was not the, their concern. <laughs> so I was a little, uh, it was not so, so good, but in fact, I invited uh, I invited in the European Parliament my Afghan friends, my Kurds friends, and I, uh, it was at the time of uh, Yemen. It was a, a huge catastrophic human, humanitarian issue in Yemen. You all remain, remind about what's going on in women and Yemen. And so I am a European MP. I have to do something. It's not possible. So uh, it, it was complicated because uh, all the MPs come and see me. No, they, they were all um, working with, uh, with Saudi Arabia. You can imagine. So Saudi Arabia was, uh, Yemen was, uh, was uh, part of Saudi Arabia for them. And so Saudi Arabia was, so it was very complicated for me. But finally, I, I succeeded. I was working as well with the UN representative uh, to Yemen, which was uh, Martin Griffiths at that time and the U Yemen representative of the European Parliament, which was uh, Antonia Corvez, which, has a very, which was a very um, a strong lady, but it was very, very difficult. Finally, I, I uh, succeed to bring in the European Parliament all parts of the Yemeni uh, war warriors, if I can say, uh, the Houthi, Ansarullah, uh, uh, the other ones, some, some from Sa some, uh, Saudi Arabia as well. And we have a huge meeting. It was so difficult for me to organize this. But finally, I succeeded and they all were there. And MPs from every, every group even attended, attended the, the conference and they were very happy. So I, I succeed doing this. So that's why, the, but. Uh, I don't succeed to, to stop the war in Yemen, but I was, I was uh, ready to go there with Martin Griffiths, the UN. We were, we have a, we were a group of uh, four uh, MPs with Martin Griffiths. Uh, we were going to Sana, but at the last minute, we had our, our visa, everything was organized. At the, last, at the last minute, Saudi Arabia said no, because we had to, uh, to ask the Saudi Arabia permission to, to cross the, the the space, the plain space, you know, to 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 accede, to to have access to to Sana. So it was it was it was finished. So that's my story for the European Parliament. Finally, <clears throat> after the European Parliament, I, I didn't want to go another another mandat, and so I met with a. Someone, two the two girls, Leslie Varen and uh, Caroline Galacteros, who I uh, and she told me, oh, I have um, we I have cre created with many militaries and uh, and researchers uh, uh, a think tank which is Geopragma, and we want to have a realistic approach of geopolitic issue, which is a uh, which is uh, not existed actually because now think tank are all ideological. Ideolo ideological, uh, so uh, pro-American, anti-American, pro-Russia, pro-China, pro, pro, China, pro uh, but we wanted to have a geopolitic, a real geopolitic. And so I am working still in IPSE with Emmanuel Dupuis and in this, uh, in this uh, think tank. And that's why, uh, that's why we, I went to Tehran and after to Syria. And this was very, it was uh, my, former, uh, my former trip in May and in June. Uh, in Tehran, we were attending, we were invited, Leo Pragma were invited 
uh, new conference about the new world order, which is now everybody is speaking about the new world order, especially with, uh, by which is going on in, uh, in Ukraine. And so I was scared to go to Iran because uh, I have already go to, I've gone in Iran with uh, IPS uh, uh, three years ago, but I was very scared because uh, everybody said, oh, it's terrible what's going on in, in Iran. And so we were invited by the University of Defense. I was with my husband who said to me, oh, you have a chance to go to Iran, I want to go. So he went, <laughs> he went with me. I was with Caroline Galacteros and I was with two, uh, um, former, one colonel, Mr. Corvez, one former, former colonel uh, in charge of uh, Lebanon, the war of Lebanon. And so it was military people. So, and so it was very interesting. We have people from every country there but not from European countries. We were only four. See, there is one Italian and four French people. For the new world order, it was terrible. And from China, from not, perhaps not, not Japan, but China, Saudi Arabia, uh, Russia, of course, uh, uh, Brazil, uh, um, uh, from everywhere in Asia, it was, so, so interesting, and uh, we could express ourselves and give conferences. My husband, which is an ecologist and uh, well, former minister of environment, give a huge conference about environment. Uh, and so all the militaries uh, and the, the people there were say, oh my God, you have to come back. We have to do many things in Iran because there, there are many problems uh, the, the Iranians with, uh, with the Elman River, which is crossed between Iran and Afghanistan. So. And so I had the opportunity to speak with the people about what is going on with the Afghan refugees now. And so you can imagine many, many, five million Afghan refugees are in Iran right now, which is uh, terrific. And uh, between these five million, three million of them could have jobs in, in, in Iran, thanks to Iran, because of that. that it's terrible. And, seven on, and 700 thousand uh, could study, girls and boys. So girls in Afghanistan, when they want to study, the best thing for them is to go to Iran <laughs> because they are, they are for free, for free. They can study uh, on the other side um, of the border. So I, I didn't know about this and nobody in the media don't talk about this. So the Iranian are are really helping the, the, the Afghan refugees uh, now, that was, uh, and, um, and, and I even, uh, even met, met with Taliban there. <laughs> there, was, there was, the Taliban were not invited in the conference, but we, we were in the same hotel because there was a huge conference about health. And uh, I met with Taliban and I, <laughs> I told them, what's going on now? What are you doing with women? And, and, they were very like this and, uh, and said to me, uh, no, no, we have to, 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 to tell this to our health minister and they don't want to, to, to speak to me, to talk to me. And so, so that's why my experience in, uh, in Iran and now, and now the Iranian wants us to organize a conference in Paris to, uh, to, say, to, to let them explain uh, the consequences of the CIS conference uh, in Tehran about the new geometry world. I think it's a, it's a good idea. So well, we are going to see what's going on. And so my second trip was in uh, Syria. Just, uh, just back to Paris, I went to Syria three days after. And this trip to, to Syria was very, very useful, I think, very useful and very uh, painful for us. But uh, it was organized not by Joe Pragma, nothing. It was organized by a friendship, uh, French Syrian friendship, Coupe d'Amitié, uh, French Syrian. And I was with two former ambassadors, uh, to one former ambassador to Syria and one former ambassador to Syria and to Sudan and many countries and another. Uh, Didier Destremo, who was, uh, who was ambassador to Saudi Arabia. Patricia, uh, just a few minutes. 
et uh, sorry, a few minutes, and then we can let people. Uh, ah bon, ok. Alors je termine just, vite. Just, yeah, 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 just, uh, je termine vite. Après, je voulais parler de 30 okay. secondes. Okay. Et voilà. And we can, yeah, voilà. And so, and so in Damas, uh, we, we met with. Uh, with the Diplomatic Academy, we met with the Red Crescent, we met with the Minister, Culture Minister, and we met the, with the Patriarch, Antioch Patriarch, um, Jose El Apsi, which is a uh, no, Patriarch of Antioch, Father Elia Zahari, which is um, the priest of Notre Dame de Damas. And I was shocked because these people are very proud and they said to us, why have you sent us to the the all these islamists of the world in our country so it's terrible what is going on and we when we arrived it was just after the earthquake and so i just want to 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 say that the, the sanction for the syrian people is terrible because it's not uh, bashar al-assad or the government which is suffering for the sanction it's the poor people who have been uh, not, not only uh, during so many years of wars but now with the earthquake, it is terrible. We see in Alep, in, it's unbelievable. You cannot imagine. So I don't understand why the European Union and uh, American are not uh, stopping all these sanctions, which is uh, absolutely stupid now. And now that uh, Syria has, uh, is in the Arab League again. And uh, so we have to stop, I think, uh, with this because it's, it's the people who are suffering. You cannot make a human rights uh, talking about human rights and let these people like it. So it was very, uh, very important. And finally, the last, uh, last trip in Cambodia, very interesting. We are part of an international observers of, for the election of members of the seventh legislator of the National Assembly invited by UPF, WELF, um, WWFP as well, and Vision, ASEAN Vision. And it was so interesting meeting. We attended a conference with the prime minister, uh, Yoon Sen, who explained why he will love to see his son becoming, becoming prime minister. So at the beginning, everybody was laughing. I said, oh, he wants to say that his son is very good. And of course, we, he, he was talking during one hour, but we were convinced at the, at the end because he explained to us that his, uh, his son was, uh, had, had made um, the big schools in America and in, uh, in England. He, was, he had made Sanders or I don't remember, military school in uh, West Point in, uh, in America. And so now he had many diplomas and uh, he, he had the choice to, to uh, make many, many money to, to be at the head of a big company, but he prefer his son, his son prefer to take care of the Cambodian people. And why not? I, I, we thought that it was a, a good thing. So the election went well. We were very well organized and thanks to UPF and uh, Asian Vision. And I had the opportunity as well to speak about Iran and Afghanistan to the, to the MPs, uh, women MPs, Asian women MPs or uh, world women MPs. Uh, so now if you have questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. Uh, I can't stop doing it. <laughs> I know that 30 minutes is very short for, for what, all what you have been doing. And uh, I mean, I can, we can feel your enthusiast, you know, to, I mean, your enthusiast, your, yeah, your, even one question I may have at first before everybody else, so we may ask you a question. How come you, you have such a passion uh, you you know to to fight for the rights how it comes what is your yeah so just my first question to you before maybe i leave everybody else to where this passion come from to really uh, to go and to be on the field and to try to help you know all this uh, Suffering because I, I don't like injustice. How would you say in English? Injustice, injustice yeah, injustice, injustice. Yeah. So yeah. for me, and perhaps to be a mother of uh, six children, and children, I, yeah. and mm. I, unfortunately, uh, I lost one when he was a baby. But that's why I have five and many, many grandchildren. And so I cannot imagine that uh, I had the chance to have us. But my husband is a, is a handful. He's, He's doing the cooking. He's not a, <laughs> a, to be <laughs> a woman, and so I can I cannot imagine that uh, women in the world uh, are suffering. For me, Afghanistan was uh, 
I, I talked to it, it is slavery and it is still slavery. And I think it is the only place in the world that women are slavery mm. because in some place in Africa, they cannot go to school, but because they are poor, but not because they are forbidden to. It's the only place in the world. So we have to, to be conscious about it. And that's why uh, okay. it's my family and perhaps um, I travel a lot when I was uh, young. Perhaps okay, this is why. In Turkey, in Istanbul, I was uh, educated in Istanbul during uh, three years when I was a little girl. Okay. Perhaps, uh, and my 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 uh, mother is coming from Haiti, and my um, my father was uh, is coming from Numea, New Caledonia. And now I have one of my daughter who is living in New Caledonia as well. Perhaps mm -hmm. this is the story of the world we used to go. Mm -hmm. Already, so I will leave as I see. We are seventy-three participants, right? Oh, seventy. So, yeah. So I'm sure there is some questions, some comments. So maybe I leave the floor open now. <laughs> so who will be? Uh, so I cannot see everybody. Yeah? Just uh, you have to show with a hand. You know, you have to click on this little button. Uh, and, uh, to, to, I cannot see. Ah, I see Caroline. Yes, now oh, Caroline. Caroline. Yeah. <laughs> uh, hello, Patricia. Thank you so much. I was always wondering the story behind all that you're doing. It's really, it's really so amazing. And um, I, I mean, the question Bridget asked, I also wanted to ask also this point about maybe because you, you were, didn't really mention so much about your family. Now you did about your husband. That's great. Like Heiner too, very supportive. <laughs> Um, but how maybe your life affected your children was one question I had. But also I wanted to tell you something about, about something that Women's Federation is doing, um, that you, um, a project that we're doing in Europe and um, Northeast and Middle East, and that's a, a program called No Peace Without Women. And just what, because I, it, and it's related to actually also the UPF Association of the First Ladies for Peace. Um, um, so we we had a we just had recently a conference in uh, in Kosovo, and we had another virtual conference uh, a year and a half ago. But basically, it's stemming from Ukraine. What happened there? It's like a response to really gather women who have impact in the world, even first ladies or heads of state and civil society uh, and really like stand up for this, you know, just indignant against the fact that people are just making wars instead of settling their, their issues in a more humane kind of way. And that women should at this time get together to do this. I think you're already doing it exactly. But one of the programs, the ideas for a program that came out of our recent Kosovo event at the parliament sponsored by the prime minister of Kosovo was to create a mentoring program with very high level women, mentoring young women, especially in the Balkans. This was actually pretty much focused on the Balkans this time. Um, but to even with, we can expect some sponsorship, I think from some of the governments there, but to create some kind of a program so we can really get young, good young women who want to do that kind of work, even the kind of work that you're doing, and I thought, anyway, we can't say everything right now, but I thought if you don't mind, I'd like to maybe contact you that we can talk a little bit more about that uh, in case you have a little piece in your busy schedule or you might want to do something else for that part of the world. Um, so, but otherwise, just thank you so much. It's such an inspiration, actually, what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Carolina. <laughs> so much. You know that uh, I've never been in Kosovo. I don't know Kosovo. Oh. I have all around the world, but <laughs> not in Kosovo. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. There um, are many, many good young people, actually. Yes, of course. Yeah. Of course. Many, but, but then they right. need, uh, we, need, we need to make something in Kosovo yes. now. Yes. But I am, frankly, I am scared by this, this Ukrainian war, and I cannot understand how we can make together the Russian and the Ukrainian together. I cannot understand this. That, that's, I think it, it's, a, it's a very strong point just now. Yeah. The, but I think easier than Taliban and the women's rights in yes. Afghanistan, actually. Yes. <laughs> easier to solve, I mean. Yes. <laughs> so I have some more uh, hand who are, so um, uh, Benedict Suzuki, so you have uh, something you want to say. Hello, uh, hello Patricia. 
um, it was so exciting to hear from you. Uh, really, um, I have many questions. So <laughs> maybe one, maybe some other, one or two. <laughs> okay, okay. So I, I got to, I have to choose one of my questions. So that's very <laughs> difficult. Um, the, I had a question about your upbringing, but you, you said you traveled a lot as a child. So that answered my question. I wanted to know um, how did you do to raise you know, the funds when you, you brought those Afghan people? And actually, where did this come, this idea? You had this idea to make some kind of, uh, like, like we do in Women's Federation, bridge of peace between the Turkish women, the Afghan women, and the French women. How did you do that? Well, it, it was a lot. I, I will ask from your, what was your first question? It, was, first, uh, it was about your, your upbringing. And, and then the second uh, was about uh, how did you raise the fund? You know, to raise the fund. bring all those people. Yeah. Yeah. I raised the fund, the first, my first funds from, uh, came from uh, America. I have uh, an uncle in America, who was very, uh, when I saw him during the holidays, uh, I told him about what was going on in Afghanistan and gave me some, some money. And he was at the head of uh, an NGO which named Saba Foundation at that time. And so he helped me to find, to find money and he helped me to bring books, English books uh, to, um, to Afghanistan. And uh, he, he knows many people. So, and I organized as well uh, conferences, but I met Eddie there in the uh, American Cathedral in Paris. We have organized a concert uh, to, to, uh, raise, uh, to raise money. And so it was a big success and we have many money. And so that's why um, the, main, the main thing. And uh, your second, second uh, question? About how did you, where did it come the idea to bring the three groups of women, the Turkish women, the Afghan women, and the oh. French women? And how did you do it? And how many women did the you French women, it was my idea. But frankly, it was very, very difficult for me to organize it. I, I spent six months organizing it. It was very difficult when the Afghans were, were there because they have just been elected, and as I said, they are coming from everywhere in Afghanistan. They know nothing. That they have no study. No, no, I can imagine. And uh, the second, the second part of our program to go to Istanbul, it was with uh, American NGO Vital Voices, it was led by Hillary Clinton and uh, Melan Verver at that time. So they, 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 they said to me, uh, Patricia, in France it's complicated, but uh, in Turkey I think it will be much more easier for the Afghans to be there. And so. I, I say, oh yes, but we have to organize a partnership between them. So we have organized official partnership. We even went in, in Kabul and organized a big ceremony with uh, French and Afghan um, to give them the, the partners. But I don't know now, now it's finished, you can imagine. But <laughs> I don't know if uh, each of uh, the French MPs and, uh, and Turkish MPs have followed the, uh, with the Afghan MPs, I don't know. What's going on? But for sure, now it's finished. Finished, <laughs> unfortunately. So thank you, thank you very much. Yeah, this you. is really incredible. I'm sure there is some more questions or comments uh, around. I cannot see also everyone. Huh? Seventy is a lot of people. Uh, da, da, da. Please, um, I think there is a question, uh, some comment on the discussion as well. Um, uh, but this is Benedict, so you have already still many questions here. No? Um, yeah, yeah. You have question here or some comment, right? I have a question, Bridget. Um, sorry? I have yeah, a you have a question, Mitty. Yes, okay. Yes. Thank you very much, Patricia, for your amazing work that you've been doing over so many years, you know, to make a difference in the lives of people. But I was very touched by the point that you were really trying to help young girls be liberated from this child marriage. I wonder if you could just explain a little bit more because it is really a, a big issue in the world, you know, that our girl, child girls get married to older men and things like that. And you said uh, um, you did a little bit there already, but if you could elaborate a little bit more, I'd like to hear what 
what you did. Unfortunately, unfortunately for in Afghanistan, it was not it was not very successful in Afghanistan because it was a huge tradition. Uh, it was not a question of Taliban or not Taliban. It was a really a tradition in the country, and sometimes there were they were married with the, the cousin or the even in Masood's uh, family. Um, Ahmad Masood was married with his, his first cousin, you know, first cousin who was born. But it was not so early marriage. It was a marriage around 16. Uh, it's okay, it's okay. But uh, in the remote places in uh, uh, Kodar, in the mountains and everywhere. So, of course, the, the men are, are at the age of 10, 12 years old. The little girls are given to to uh, old men, and it's really terrible. And so that's why in Azerbaijan, I was invited to um, Azerbaijan to. I heard that there is early marriage in Azerbaijan. I said, it's not possible because Azerbaijan is a very developed country. Uh, there is women rights, and what is going on? So that's why we decided with uh, Anne Marie Lisa to to go to go in the south of uh, of uh, Azerbaijan because it was closer to Iran. And Iran, it's a Muslim um, republic, and I, and I heard that in Iran it was not easy. So I would like to know, we would like to know what was go, going on in the in the school there. And of course, it was it was uh, it was it is very important that it was uh, the government put all this uh, affiche. How do you say this? Posters. Pictures, Posters. pictures, pictures, posters, mm -hmm. saying. It is not allowed to marry before the age of uh, 16. So, oof, it was a lot. I don't know in Iran now. I think in Iran it's forbidden as well until, until, until 16. It's really a terrible thing for me in Afghanistan. I don't know in other country, but in Afghanistan, it's, it's still terrible. And now that the Taliban are back again, mm. no, no, it's uh, a mess, really. Miti, Miti Toma is an uh, um, uh, international, I mean, uh, European president of the Women's Federation, just to, to let you know, Patricia. Ah, okay, okay, nice. nice. He's also president of the Women's Federation in UK. We surely <laughs> met in uh, some country. Yes. Oh, we met in somewhere. London. Yes. We really met. Yeah. Anyway, it's really good to hear your story. This is the whole purpose of it, because we meet, but, you know, we want to go that one step deeper and to get to know the amazing work that you have done in your life. and. The impact you have made in many people's lives. So thank you for but, uh, sharing. Um, I haven't answered to the question: uh, How can I organize all this with my children? And okay. the thing is, is my I have two eldest children, which have uh, twelve uh, years uh, difference with the other one, the other part of one. And so the, the with big family, uh, the the oldest eldest are helping. The youngest, everybody was working like, it was like this, I was much more, uh, and I have the chance of have, have my husband, uh, Brice, which who is uh, very helpful uh, at, uh, at home. And we have the chance as well to have jeune fille au père, do you say, uh, people who, who help me, uh, who, mm -hmm. who help me. And so, uh, oh, you, you have to ask my children if they suffered about this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was mixed, sometimes they say, oh, mama, mommy, we are not there and sometimes say oh we are very proud what we are doing and i want to know more so it's a balance it's complicated it's, it's complicated but i think we okay uh, we have uh, someone else who um uh, have hand uh, the hand uh, sorry betsy oman yeah so sorry betsy yeah sorry <laughs> patricia can you hear me yes yeah. uh, i'm Edie's sister let me see. Hold on. I just lost him. I'm Edie's sister, and I'm, I'm talking to you from the, the USA, from Mississippi. But I just wanted to, to share something with you, Patricia. Um, I worked with the Committee to Free Afghanistan during the Soviet reign hmm. uh, with Karen McKay, and I worked on the education of leaders in America for nine years with her, trying to liberate them from the Soviets. And then the Taliban came in, then the Taliban came in. But now I work at a university, I'm a professor, and I put together a curriculum that I'm trying to, I want to put it together as a book. It's a curriculum for ambassadors for peace, because I believe the hope of, of Afghanistan and the hope of many of these countries is the education, as you said, of young girls mm. so that they can stand up against these leaders. And in I, I, I can't believe that God would give up 
after so much effort, so much energy, so much money, so much investment in Afghanistan that that will be lost. I feel like that's some kind of almost a condition to restore these people and that we cannot give up on those countries. We have to reach them through educating their young people, through the internet, through universities, so that those kids can coalesce, they can work together, they can stand up and they can fight their own people. I think that's going to be the hope and I hope and pray. And I ask everyone here in Europe as well, and WFWP, keep praying for Afghanistan. We cannot give up on that country, not only that, but anywhere where women are treated like a chattel, like treated like slaves. Every country has to be liberated. And I think that's what Mrs. Moon is trying to do right now, is to really bring that consciousness to the world about women being equal partners and daughters of God. But I really acknowledge you, Patricia, for your work with Afghanistan. I have such an investment there and I'm just so grateful. It was not lost, it'll never be lost. Those kinds of investments are never lost. So we have to have hope no matter what. Mm -hmm. Anyway, yeah. thank you. Thank, thank you so much. I, I hope so already, but uh, you know, I am a little desperate, but um, for me, you know, having, uh, having gone in Iran, it was very, um, I see Iran is very close, is close to Afghanistan. They have the same border. And so perhaps I can tell, tell the Afghan foolish Taliban or, to, to say it's not possible that the little girls don't go to school. It is my, um, perhaps it is only Iran can say them, the Russian, the China, it's terrible for us. We, we've lost everything, but, but I think it's a mess for us. But uh, I think now it's Iran, Russia, China, vis-a-vis -vis Afghanistan, they, can, they have to push and say, we are not giving you money, but I don't understand really what America is doing with the Taliban now, because with one hand, they are continuing to pay the Taliban and the other hand, they are criticized. So it's not, it's not clear what, what's, uh, there is a double game. Um, America has double game there. I have a question again here um, from Caroline saying that you spoke of Iran, a country that was quite a negative publicity. Mm -hmm. Could you say something about what can be done by women to end the polarization that we see in the world, such as your mentioning of good educational program for Afghan women in Iran? Yes, but you know, I was very, it was amazing for me to, to go to go in Iran because we went in the bazaar, we were traveling everywhere in restaurants in Iran. And most of the girls have no, no veil now, even if we, when I was there five years ago, before, they were, they were all scared, not big veil, only the, the old, oldest women. But the young girls, they are only a little, little veil like this. And now most of them have, have take, take off their veil. They are all going to school. They are very proud. They are, they are, the youngest are in jean. And, uh, no, it's, uh, I was completely disappointed because nothing to do with uh, the picture that the media uh, is going to is uh, giving to us. So it's uh, so I think that the, the best way for Afghan women is, is for me is that the Iranian because the, the Iran is a big civilization. You can just uh, you cannot just uh, take uh, Iran like this because they are yes. very uh, strong. I, I know all the problems, geopolitical problem between the United States, Europe, and uh, Iran and. Uh, and uh, we, we fell with the GCPOR agreement and we fell with uh, many things. But uh, I think we have a lot of to do with them, especially about education for, for our Af Afghan little girls and, and Afghan women. Because in, in Iran, we, you have even, uh, have, we have even, even uh, women ministers. We have women minister, of course, they are veiled and completely uh, like this, but uh, they, are, they are in the parliament and they are everywhere. Mm -hmm. That's a great victory. Yeah. So, um, but I am not saying that everything is well. I prefer <laughs> not to have an Islamic Republic, but uh, we have to say, you know, now I am very pragmatic now. I, I think like you couldn't work or saying, oh, we have to regime change in one way. We have, we have to work with the people like they are now like they are and to, to push them by diplomacy and I think diplomacy is a more we we have to have much more diplomacy now because you know what's going on between Ukrainian and, and Russian we don't speak together we have 
what is going on? We have to, to speak. We have to, to not to make war and not to decide to, to, uh, <laughs> to take away this, uh, this guy because he is authoritarian, he's not democrat. Okay, okay, but uh, we are making wars everywhere. So we, we are yeah. now push for peace and uh, negotiation. And Karen, you are right. We have to, to uh, form it, we have to form the young. Yeah, to form. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, we are coming closer to the to the time, but maybe a last uh, whatever can make comment or not. Otherwise, I have an announcement also uh, to give. If nobody else wants to, I'm sure there is some more question. Maybe Je some peux. comment as well. C'est Mr. Joel. <laughs> ah, somebody um, is speaking. Just, Joel. No, ah, okay. No, okay, Joel. Please. I don't know your background of religion. But how you think religion can influence uh, the world? Because many times religion went back to some countries more very, let's say, active. But how can religion can bring people together? Mm. <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> Complicated question. It depends. When we are, you have a moderate religion, it's OK. The problem is uh, it's a uh, hard line uh, in, in religions, <laughs> even if they are Christian, even, even if they are Muslim, even if they are Jewish, uh, even uh, if you are tolerant, tolerant, tolerant. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. uh, and uh, all, all my Muslim friends I know, that they are very tolerant. Uh, they, they want the, the, mm -hmm. their girls to be educated. They want to go to, to, to have the, the, the much life. Of, uh, so it's not a question of religion, it's a question of, uh, of moderation. Yeah. yeah, I'm talking about uh, like uh, good religious people, not like extremists. Yes, exactly, <laughs> absolutely. Mm -hmm. even, even in Iran, in Iran, you, are very moder you have many moderated sheets who, mm -hmm. who push the government mm -hmm. and they were fighting against them, or there was political issues, and even now. So. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, to go, maybe. Yeah, Joel is fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Joel. So now we are coming to the end of our of our meeting. Huh? Uh, I'm sure there's maybe more to say. Huh? Anyway, uh, Patricia, we really thank you for uh, giving such a time and to share a little about about your work. And we, I think, we can feel inspired by your passion for for injustice. Yeah, to to fight for the justice and for the right of women and young women as well, and for the education of young women. I mean, anyway, we learn a lot of things tonight from you and I'm sure. So I just have a small little inform announcement uh, before we leave, uh, before we, we leave. Uh, I just want to inform that uh, the Women uh, Federation organized um, you know, in uh, on, I mean, organize our 20th annual Women Leadership Conference in Cyprus from the 3rd to the 5th of November uh, on the theme of transforming our world to advancing peace, a culture of peace and human dignity. So if you want to have some more information, you have um, uh, here the website, uh, which is Women Federation for World Peace Europe.org, where you can get all the information about this conference. Even Patricia, you are invited if you want to come. Hey. <laughs> why not? Why not? Oh, why not? Absolutely. I have not my agenda, I have not my things now, but uh, why not? So, voilà. Anyway, I can give you more information about it uh, personally if you want. But anyway, you are also, everyone who wants to come. I mean, those who really feel like they like to come, they well, they just have to to find out uh, uh, through this website. Anyway, thank you for all the participations from everyone from different countries. I know from Greece. I see Heidi in front of me, <laughs> and uh, also from Austria, and it's really great, you know. Uh, so and then. Uh, and also we have Michel Tauchan also with us uh, and uh, from Norway with Brita and uh, Mr. Ah, Mr. Vohavong also here. And uh, yeah, from UK, Spain. So from everywhere, I think I, I don't want to forget anyone, but anyway, you are already. So thank you very much. Thank you very, very much for, uh, for everything. And uh, so we will have another news story next month, I think. 
in September. So I don't know yet the person who will be invited, but this is uh, from the Middle East. I think they will invite someone from the Middle East. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much, Patricia, once thank again. Thank you, thank you, Brigitte, and thank you, everybody. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Have a good evening. Women World Peace Federation. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Thank you very much. Thank you, Patricia. Bye-bye.